When God brought Bob McCartney to our church 15 years ago, he brought with him a desire to see our church continue to build on our faithful past and to grow into our called future. Pastor Bob immediately shared with us his desire to see our church not only continue to encourage more people within our walls, but to go beyond our walls to reach others for Christ. God has faithfully blessed our church during these last 15 years. Let's take a look. Wes Hawkins here from Dallas, and we join so many other people who are rejoicing with all of you in this happy occasion of 15 years as pastor and people. Bob, I've known you since you were a young preacher down here in Texas and have loved you since the first day I met you. Thank you that, like King David, you lead with the integrity of your heart and the skillfulness of your hands as Asaph said in Psalm 78, 72. First Baptist Church, under the leader of Pastor Bob McCartney, has reached out to the North Texas community in a variety of new and innovative ways. In 2010, the Texoma Outdoor Expo was designed to encourage family bonding and family time spent together in God's great outdoors. This event gave us an opportunity to reach new people and families in our community. It also enabled us to share Christ to more than 4,000 in attendance. In April of 2011, Church at Shepherd's Citywide 5K Fun Run kicked off the first FBCWF satellite campus located in the community of Shepherd Air Force Base. This event introduced our campus to 2,800 people in attendance and included more than 900 runners. In 2012, it was the desire of First Baptist Church to encompass our city and surrounding communities with one large area-wide North Texas Easter celebration. This amazing event featured the saving message of salvation at Kay Yeager Coliseum to 6,000 guests in attendance. In 2014, we returned to Kay Yeager Coliseum for Texoma's inspiration with Nick Vujicic. Over 7,000 people heard the gospel through the powerful testimony of Nick Vujicic. This event resulted in more than 300 salvations, as well as numerous rededications. We're so happy for what God is doing through you, Mary Ann and Callie. I always said if First Baptist Wichita Falls ever got a real pastor, there's no limit to what they could do. And they've certainly thrived under your great and godly leadership. On behalf of all of us here at First Baptist Dallas, happy anniversary and many more to come, I'm sure. Pastor Bob's passion for missions has led our church in forming relationships across the globe and supporting new ministries in areas where God's work is greatly needed. When our relationship with Antioch Baptist Church, St. Kitts, first began, the initial emphasis featured a music outreach and medical mission ministry on the island. The partnership eventually resulted in our FBCWF mission teams working together with Antioch to help build their new worship facility. Indeed, we here in St. Kitts and Antioch Baptist Church are particularly encouraged. For the past 15 years, you have poured into this ministry in so many ways. Today, we are thankful to you for your service from the first day until now. And only eternity will be able to reveal the blessing that First Baptist Church of Wichita Falls, Texas, has been to this mission church here in the Caribbean. Through the direction of Pastor Bob, our church accepted the challenge to become one of the Southern Baptist Convention's church planting congregations. What started as a small church plant has now become Church of the Valley with their own meeting place and a growing group of Christian believers who are flourishing on the outskirts of Salt Lake City. Well, hey, Pastor Bob, Justin Bendel here from Church of the Valley in Salt Lake City, Utah. Congratulations, congratulations on 15 years. Uh, you and your family have been such a gift to us, have been such a support to us, 
And we just want to say thank you and congratulations. And we're prayerful for many more years of fruitful ministry there at First Baptist Church in Wichita Falls. Pastor Bob has been a guest instructor at Emmanuel University in Romania for many years. He has instructed and encouraged future pastors and leaders who are currently reaching Europe for Christ. Our church has helped Emmanuel with the installation and training of a complete video production system. This system is now used to extend their Christian reach beyond their campus to others throughout the world. Thank you also for your faithful investment in the life of our students over the years. From our graduates spread in more than 40 countries of the world, please accept our heartfelt gratitude and our prayers for your continuing ministry in the years to come. We pray for you that God will continue to bless you and we pray that his face will always shine on you and your ministry. Our commitment to missions is a strong one. And with our pastor's establishment of Orphans Embrace in 2012, we have helped children and families in both Texas and Oklahoma for the past 11 years. Upon his arrival, our pastor announced his desire to have a solid presence in the lives of students at Midwestern State University and families at Shepherd Air Force Base. As you talked about how he had given you uh, the desire to establish a ministry at MSU and a ministry at Shepherd Air Force Base, I knew you were the pastor that God wanted for First Baptist. Our FBCWF college ministry has equipped hundreds of students with the gospel of Jesus who attend both on-campus events, the bridge on Tuesdays, life groups on Sundays, and a collection of weekly home groups. Pastor Bob, thank you so much for your leadership, your integrity, and your vision to reach the city of Wichita Falls, surrounding areas, and specifically the Shepherd Air Force Base. The church at Shepherd exists because of your faithfulness to listen to the Holy Spirit to reach our military community. Thousands of active duty personnel go through training at Shepherd Air Force Base every year. With our pastor's vision for church at Shepherd, this makes it perfect to provide ongoing ministry to many military families. Pastor Bob, on behalf of West Campus, I just want to say thank you so much for week in and week out, just standing upon the Word of God, for just bringing the inerrant, authoritative Word of God, for holding firm to that, for preaching truth, for not shying away from the hard topics, and just allowing us to experience Christ and His Word every single day. It's a true testament to your integrity and your passion for him, and thank you for leading out in that. From his inspiring weekly messages from the pulpit to his interaction with so many, our pastor has truly led our church to experience God's blessings these past 15 years. With his leadership and vision for the next five years and beyond, we are truly thankful to Pastor Bob for being a faithful leader called by God for this congregation. Good morning. Good morning. Today is a great and special day at First Baptist Church. Uh, as we get to look back and celebrate and thank the Lord for all he has done through Pastor Bob's ministry these past 15 years, I want you to know I am personally excited to have this privilege uh, this morning uh, as the executive pastor at First Baptist to honor my pastor. I did this twice this morning. I hadn't done this yet, so I'm, I apologize for that. To honor my pastor, to honor our pastor, and my very close friend, Dr. Bob McCartney. Romans 13, 7 says these words. Paul is giving instructions to all believers, and he says, You are to give honor to whom honor is due. The word honor there, as it's used all throughout the New Testament, means very clearly to esteem and to distinguish above. The word do, D-U-E, means to pay back. The verse literally reads in the Greek, to the one worthy of your honor, you recognize and pay back that one with your blessings. There are many things that we are to honor in the Bible. Matter of fact, there's a remarkable study you can do on the word honor or honorable or dishonor or dishonorable in the scriptures. 176 times those words are used. Uh, folks, uh, uh, knowing who and what and how to honor is important. 
this is another sermon for another time, but part of the confusion of the children of our culture is they, don't, they have not been taught how to honor and who to honor and what should not be honored. Well, right before his death, the Apostle Paul wrote these uh, famous words as recorded in 1 Timothy 5, 17. He says these, these instructions, let the elders, the elders there being the overseer, singular, the lead pastor, the teaching pastor, or the under shepherd, under the chief shepherd, the Lord Jesus, I command, literally, I command that the elder, what? Who oversees the affairs of God's church well. Not just oversees it, but he oversees it well. You count that one worthy of double honor. You hold that one up worthy, literally, for double honor, especially those who labor hard in the preaching and the teaching of God's Word. We have the opportunity uh, today to honor and bless our pastor. And while we and I never want to do anything, especially in a worship service, to take away from our message being Jesus and His Word and our focus and worship being solely on Jesus, we can at the same time honor those whom the Lord says we are to honor. So at the risk of... Um, making Pastor Bob feel uncomfortable today because I know he doesn't like all this attention, but I know it's right and good to honor him, especially my words today. I want to do that. There are many reasons that I could honor Pastor Bob, but I want to briefly share these three, and I've thought a lot about this. First one is this, very obvious to all of us. Bob is a great preacher and faithful to God's Word. This way you say amen and you applaud. Yes, you do. <laughs> amen. That scripture says that uh, you honor the one, the overseer who labors hard, labors hard in preaching and teaching. Bob works hard at it, and he is good at it, and we have been blessed. The command to Peter, the first pastor was, Peter, Jesus said to Peter three times, you feed my sheep, spiritual food, the bread of life. You feed my sheep, you feed my sheep. We have a great uh, visual I want you to see. In 15 years, Bob has labored very hard and fed us very well. These are 79 sermon series in 15 years. That's a lot of work. That's amazing. That's a blessing to all of us. That's a great visual. I have shared with many minister friends of mine from other churches, kind of bragged to them, and I said, my children, the last 15 years, have never heard a bad sermon. Now, they've heard it from me or a few other people around here, but they've never heard from Pastor Bob. <laughs> That's true. Not many people can say that. It's blessed my family. Um, second thing is, and the other two things about Pastor Bob are not so obvious to all. Uh, my unique vantage point is his close friend, executive pastor. I probably have known Bob better than anyone in the last 15 years other than Marianne and Callie. I'm going to tell you the second thing about him. I think it's the greatest compliment you can ever give a pastor. And this is what it is. He is a man of prayer. I'm not talking about public prayer. We know he can pray publicly. I'm talking about his personal, private prayer life. He has been phenomenally diligent in that area of his life. I've asked myself the question, why has God blessed Bob's ministry so much through the years? I've come to the conviction it's because of his personal, private prayer life. James 5, 17, it says this, the effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man, if he knows it, accomplishes much, changes things. It works. Verse goes on to say, Elijah was a man like us. He prayed that it wouldn't rain for three years, and it didn't. He prayed that it would start raining again, and it did. I can tell you from my vantage point that um, I've been amazed through the years. All that I've heard Bob saying, I'm going to pray about this. I'm praying about that. We're going to pray about this first and foremost. I'm going to tell you from my vantage point, uh, Pastor Bob has heard God's voice many times, and God has heard his voice. That's what it means to walk with the Lord. It's all right. <laughs> He's so uncomfortable with this, I apologize. He has heard God's voice, and God has heard his voice. And by the way, that is what it means to walk with the Lord. I personally have come to realize that so much of the blessings of God on our church these past 15 years has been because of his faithful, diligent prayer life. It explains the longevity. It explains the power of God. It explains, you can see it in your book, over 2,500 people have been baptized here. It's been out of the overflow of his prayer life that God has blessed his ministry in this church. And with rare exception, I might add, 
God blesses a church in any ministry from the top down and then from the inside of the heart out. And you won't find another exception. I've never even heard of a church or ministry that's blessed by God without a pastor who knows how to pray. For you, some of y'all in this room who are going to the ministry or some of you who are pastors, if you're watching, you can be the best preacher in the world, but unless you know how to pray, it's going to be all for nothing. You better know how to pray. You better know how to hear God's voice as our pastor does, and then follow that voice and lead from that. Behind the scenes, I can tell you that as Bob has led the staff, he'll tell us three things. You pray about everything. Then out of the overflow of that prayer, you go do the work of your ministry and leave the results to God and let God work. God will honor the prayers of his people only, and he'll honor the prayers of his pastor, he does. God's not obliged to honor anything in your life, but he will honor the humble prayers of his pastor and people. Third thing. And this other thing that many people don't realize about Pastor Bob is this. He possesses a very genuine spirit of humility. 1 Peter 5, 6 says it this way. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may, may you know what, exalt you in his time and in his way, it might say. For God is opposed to the proud. He'll fight the proud. And he's talking to Christians here. But he gives great grace to the humble. When you walked in today, we gave you this booklet. All the blessings of God on this church the last 15 years. Uh, I'm going to tell you that Bob has remained very grounded in the midst of all these successes. Many pastors, you need to know this, cannot handle success. And a lesser man's pride would have taken him down, and God will take him down. And all the pastors you hear about that are taken down these days, you think it's for outward moral reasons, it's because of our pride problem. And we honor the fact today that Pastor Bob, a lot because of his prayer life, for whatever, because he walks the Lord, he has squelched that pride and said, this is about the Lord. Matter of fact, I can tell you very sincerely, there's a sincerity about Bob's love for the Lord. There's a clarity about his purpose, and it is about one thing, Jesus. The, he knows this church and his ministry have been about one thing, Jesus. This is the Lord's church, and he, Jesus, is the head. And the Lord has been the one that's built and blessed this church. Personally, kind of wrapping things up, I want to tell you a quick little story. In 2008, Bob had been here for three months. He uh, called me and said, I, I want you to come to my office. Come to his office. He says, I have an idea. At the time, I was the youth pastor here. This was a Thursday. He said, um, what would you think about being the executive pastor here at the church? I'm going to rearrange, rearrange the staff. You'd be the executive pastor. And of course, I had no idea what that even meant then. I'm not sure I still do, but I certainly didn't know what it was then. <laughs> and... Um, he said, I want you to pray about it. Go home, talk to your wife, Mary, about it. On Monday, give me an answer. That was a Thursday. I go home that day, that evening. I said, Mary, you're not going to believe this. Uh, uh, Bob said, um, Pastor Bob said, what would you think about being an executive pastor? And she was kind of stunned. She said, well, what do you think? I said, well, you told us to go home and pray about it this weekend. I said, but I know two things. Number one is, uh, in just three months, there's a very kindred spirit between Bob and I, biblically speaking. There was a oneness there, a unity there. Uh, you ever had those people in your life that uh, the relationship just works, it's easy? It's always been that way, Bob and I. And uh, so I said, well, I know the relationship works, and uh, it's going to. We, we, have, uh, we spend hundreds of hours together every year. I can honestly tell you this. I've never had a relationship with somebody that we never disagree. That's the truth. And it just, it just been blessed. I knew from that day, I said, Mary, I know God, God's going to bless this relationship, this friendship. And so I'm very grateful to Bob for our friendship today. But I said, a second thing, though, is this. I said, I've only known Bob for three months, but I can already tell he's a person of integrity. He's a natural God-given leader. And God's hand is on him. The Lord's going to use him greatly in this church. This is going to work. And that was a Thursday. And uh, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to say yes on Monday. Show up Monday, I told him, yes, I'm going to do this. Now, I've confessed this now to Bob. I never prayed about this. You asked me to pray about this. I never prayed about this. <laughs> that's going to explain a lot on my end, doesn't it? Well, Jerry, that's been 15 years ago. Some things are so right. This doesn't discount what I just said about prayer, but some things are so right, you don't have to pray about it. <laughs> you just go, the Lord's in this thing. Um, and God has used him greatly in this church. Here's my verse for Pastor Bob's ministry. One of my favorite verses in Scripture, and especially if you guys are going in the ministry, ladies, you need this verse in your heart and life. 2 Chronicles 16.9. The Lord is speaking uh, through a prophet there to King Asa. And he says, King Asa, for the eyes of the Lord 
roam throughout the whole world. He's looking. He's roaming. God doesn't roam much. His eyes are roaming for what? Look at it there. So that he may strongly support, get fully behind the weight of the Lord, those whose heart is what? Partly his. It's completely his. God's looking for somebody he can support strongly who has his heart. And without making Bob feel uncomfortable, God has his heart, and God has strongly supported his ministry in this church. So, uh, Pastor Bob, on behalf of me and my family, our entire church, our staff, I, we are honored to call you pastor. <clears throat> I, hope to, I hope today has shown our appreciation to you. This has been an encouragement for you. Yeah, you and Mary Ann, I'm sorry, <clears throat> and Callie mean a great deal to me and my family and our church family. We are thankful for you, happy to honor you today, and your ministry, and we're looking forward to many more years to come. Um, after I pray, we've got a little thank you video, a bunch of folks, and uh, some closing presentations. Lord, thank you so much, Jesus, for your blessings on our life, the blessings on our church. We honor those good and great and godly things and people in, your life, in, in our life that you give us. Thank you for our church. We never take this for granted. Bless our pastor and his family today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Happy 15th anniversary, Pastor Bob. We're so thankful for the opportunity to raise our family under your leadership. First, I can remember Pastor Bob saying, as our pastor, he addressed what he wanted to be called, and he said, I do not want to be called, Robert. I do not want to be called Dr. McCartney when you feel like I've earned it. I want to be called Pastor Bob. Happy, Happy anniversary, anniversary, Pastor, Pastor Bob. Bob. Happy 15th anniversary here at First Baptist Pastor. It's been a great 15 years, and we're looking forward to so many more. Pastor Bob, thank you so much for the way you've led us for 15 years, the way you've been sensitive to the Holy Spirit in your life, and the way the Holy Spirit has led you to lead us. Hi, Pastor Bob. Thank you for being the greatest and coolest pastor of our church. Thank you, Pastor Bob, and happy anniversary. And thank you, Mary Ann and Callie, for all that you do. Thank you, Pastor Bob. Thank you, Pastor Bob, for uh, doing everything for us and leading us well. Happy 15th anniversary, anniversary Pastor Bob. Bob. Thank you, Pastor Bob, for everything. You are awesome. Pastor Bob, it has been an extreme joy to serve the Lord with you here at First Baptist and looking forward to many years to come. Thank you, Pastor Bob, for loving and leading us well. Thank you for the leadership you've provided the church over the past 15 years. Thank you, Pastor Bob, for all you do. Happy 15th anniversary. Thank you, Pastor Bob, for all you do for us. We really do appreciate you. It's been a joy to be under your leadership. Happy 15th anniversary. Hi, Pastor Bob. Happy 15th anniversary. Happy 15th anniversary, Pastor Bob. Happy anniversary, Pastor Bob. Congratulations, Bob Ford. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations on 15 years. We love you, Uncle Bob. Congratulations, Bob. We're proud of you. We love you. Love you. Thank you for being our pastor. Happy anniversary. Thank you, Pastor Bob, for everything you do, and happy anniversary. Pastor Bob, thank you for serving these last 15 years. It's been a pleasure serving under your leadership. Happy anniversary. Thank you, Pastor Bob, for serving us so well these past 15 years. And for being bold and always speaking the truth. Pastor Bob, we want to congratulate you on 15 years of service and leading this church. We want to thank you for leading us in biblical foundations and standing on the truth and the Word of God. Thank you so much, and we want to just say, Happy, happy anniversary, anniversary, Pastor, Pastor Bob. Bob. We are thankful for a pastor who prepares diligently in the Word to deliver us uh, truth with such passion. Thank you, Pastor Bob. Happy, Happy 15th, 15th anniversary, anniversary, Pastor Bob. Bob. 15 years. 15 years. 15, wow, 15 years. Man, we had brown hair 15 years ago. No, we didn't. Oh, I used to be a lean, mean working out machine 15 years ago. Mm, no, you weren't. No. 15 years, uh... What he meant to say was, happy 15 years, Pastor Bob. Hello, Pastor Bob. Thank you for being the greatest pastor and happy 15th anniversary. Happy 15 years, Pastor Bob. We love you so much and we're honored to have a pastor as loving and kind as you are. We thank you so much for how you support our college ministry. 
Thank you, Pastor Bob. Did you hear it's Pastor Bob's 15th anniversary? 15 years? We weren't even born then, so he's been our pastor our whole lives. Thank you, Pastor Bob. Hey, Pastor Bob, this is the 180 High School Group. We just want to say we're super thankful and grateful for you being our pastor. Congratulations, Pastor Bob. Hey, Pastor Bob, we thank you so much for the 15 years. We look forward to the future. Happy, Happy anniversary, anniversary, Pastor, pastor Bob. Bob. Happy 15th anniversary as a pastor, Pastor Bob. Pastor Bob, congratulations on 15 years. Stephanie and I um, have been tremendously blessed by your teaching and the way that you've led the church. So happy 15 year anniversary. We can't wait to see what the future holds. Right. Well, my name is James Frank and, and a little over 15 years ago, it was one of the uh, best privileges I've ever had in my life and biggest responsibilities to join uh, with uh, seven other members of the church and be part of the pastor search committee that brought Pastor Bob here. And uh, so I'm just going to make a couple comments. I said I only had two minutes to talk about great things about Bob, so I've had to narrow it down to five. Um, five things uh, that I respect a ton about Bob and, and just want to share them with y'all, but with, with also with him. Uh, first is that you love God and love other people. Uh, that only counts as one. Uh, but it's but it's really the balance that you bring of doing both those things that you are you are a holy godly man, but you also love people and it shows. And I think you really can't do one without the other. But you teach us that and you and you live it uh, before us. And really appreciate that. Uh, second, we've had discussions on this in business meetings. You lead with integrity uh, with all you do in your personal life, uh, but also the way he leads the church. Uh, I think everybody who has worked for him, but on staff. You see the integrity behind the scenes that maybe some of y'all don't see, but he, but he has it. He's the real deal, and, and it's uh, something very, very much appreciate. Um, uh, another thing is you work with churches in town. I think First Baptist Church for a long time, it's been the biggest church in town. It has a unique role in this church, but you don't lord it over people. You work with other pastors, and as somebody who's out in the community, many of y'all are, uh, it's fun to be proud of that and proud of it in a good way of, of, of realizing that it's the whole church, the whole body uh, working together. Um, the fourth is, is the way you uh, have led us in missions. Uh, you've led us both uh, financially uh, to contribute and increase uh, sacrificially in terms of missions. You've done it in supporting some of the younger missionaries that have come out of this church. Uh, you know, saw some of them on the, on the screen. Uh, and that doesn't happen by accident. It happens by design and by leadership. Uh, and you've done a great job and also obviously personally participate in that, whether it's going to Romania or other places. And so uh, that has meant a lot. I know I'm seeing nods from some of the other pastor search committee. It's just something that really uh, has, has been awesome. And uh, Jerry started with it, but I'll finish with it. You, you preach the word uh, unashamedly with conviction and passion. Uh, and my kids, too, haven't had a bad sermon, except for when Jerry teaches. <laughs> um, wherever Jerry is. Sorry, Jerry. Love you, man. Love you, man. Um, so, sorry, it's not your day today, though, so go with me. But uh, anyway, you're, you're a good man. I'm proud to call you my pastor and friend, and just uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, speaking of another good man, one, the guy who led us through uh, the pastor search committee was the uh, chairman of the pastor search committee. He's been gone for a while, but, but it was really uh, just an awesome, awesome individual. He's going to share some and make a presentation from the search committee. Roy Sparkman. Thank you, James. It's really an honor for Donna and me to be back here today. We've been gone for a little bit, but we love this church. Our three children grew up in this church. They became Christians in this church. Our son surrendered to the ministry of this church. In fact, he's preaching today at his church in Georgetown, and a lot of that is a result of this church. So we love this church and the people in it. So let me start off by saying, Pastor Bob and Marianne and Callie, congratulations on behalf of the committee. We're extremely excited about this day and the ministry that God has led you in here. And I thought since many of you probably were not here 16 years ago when we started this, that I might share just a little bit about the process itself. And it's a testimony not to pat us on the back, but to, to give God credit of how he can take some imperfect people and accomplish his will uh, through that process. When we were elected, we were elected by the whole church, and each of us was deeply committed to Christians to Christ, deeply committed to this church, deeply committed to be able to find God's man for this church. But it was not always the easiest process as we started. Uh, we, we started out, and I would say that the, the five of us men were very opinionated, very outspoken, and probably stubborn as a pack of mules, okay? So it's a pack of mules and three sweet ladies. That's what we had. 
And I remember one night I was sitting there and uh, I, a couple of our men were strongly, let me emphasize the word, strongly expressing a disagreement about something. And I looked over at our three sweet ladies and one of them had their, her head bowed, eyes closed, see her mouth moving, she was praying. One of them was reading scripture and the third one was wiping her eyes. <laughs> and I went home that night and I thought, Lord, I, I don't know how we're going to do this. I, you have got to do a miracle here because I don't know how we're going to do this. And as we began to work through the process, we began to share individually our testimony of how God had worked in our lives individually on the deepest level, the deepest hurts we'd experienced, the highs that we'd experienced. And there was one particular committee member who will remain unnamed, okay, to protect him, that sometimes could be rather blunt, direct, and you kind of have to work to get to the heart side of it. As he began to share how he had been raised by a single mom and he shared scripture and he had tears in his eyes while sharing it, it was like I felt like I could see his heart. And as we began to see each other's heart, then God was able to work with us. And it was during that process that I felt like God just kind of said in my spirit, okay, now I've got you where I want you. And not everything was as difficult as that, and it's not that we didn't have any disagreements after that, but they were handled much differently. We had a couple of fun, funny moments. I remember the first time that I went to, to Sulphur Springs to hear Pastor Bob. You know, we did the things we're supposed to do, checked to be sure he was preaching. We checked on time of service. We all said, okay, we're going in four doors separately so it doesn't look like the mob's showing up and they know it's a pastor search committee. And as I opened the door and I step out to, to go in there, I realized that Pastor Bob was about to start the invitation. And I thought, uh-oh. And we, as it turned out, it was time change Sunday. And, un <laughs> and under the leadership of our dear Pastor Bob, he had decided, the church had decided not to change their clocks until after the service. And so we just kind of snuck back out, got back out in the car and laughed at ourselves and came back and had to go back another time. And... Uh, I never did really fully understand exactly how a TSA representative would think as we're going through the airport in, D in D Love Field one time that sweet Kathy Drake <laughs> might be a terrorist. I never understood that. But you'll have to ask her. I don't have time to explain all of that, but ask her about that sometime. So, so we had a, a good time, and then we went through all of the process, the step you're supposed to do, of background checks, be sure he had his degrees, he said he did, all that kind of stuff. Our secret weapon was Danny Cravens, who I had known when I was in private practice as a lawyer. And Danny could just, he can mix with people. And he doesn't intimidate anybody, and they'll just start talking to him. So we asked him to go to Sulphur Springs and just sit there and, and mingle with the people and eat at cafes. I think he maybe had about eight or nine meals that day, I'm not sure, <laughs> trying to find out all he could about Pastor Bob. And, and of course, all the reports came back very good. And... I've always thought, Pastor Bob, you were great. You were really, really, really good. But it was Mary Ann that sold the deal. Okay, she sold the deal. And then when we found out that she was expecting Callie, our ladies all moved into the mother hen mode, and I don't think we could have possibly moved away from Bob as our pastor. Uh, and probably one of the final things for me was we invited them before we had extended the call to come to Wichita Falls to come here and visit the church and our community and for us to have an opportunity to talk to them as well. And after I picked Bob up on that Saturday morning and he'd been for a run, which will not come as a surprise to anybody, he told me that as he was running, he began to pray for the people that he would see and pray for the houses. To me, that told me he had a heart for the people. And then he began to share how he could see how this church could have a ministry at Shepherd Air Force Base and, and then also a greater ministry at Midwestern. For me, that told me that God had already begun to give him a, a vision for what he could accomplish in this church. So as a committee, I, I think we maybe had 100 names we'd worked through before it was all said and done. And we only voted one time on whether to call someone, and it was Pastor Bob, and it was unanimous. And when we showed up that Sunday morning to reenact it, each one of the committee members, one by one, stepped to the microphone to say yes, 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 and yes. And so... And with, at that time, I felt very clearly that Pastor Bob was the man for this church. But now, being able to look through the rearview mirror 15 years later, I'm even more confirmed that he was the right man that God wanted for this church. And that's a tribute to God and how God, in his providence, can bring the right person at the right time. So, Pastor Bob, thank you for making the committee look good. But even more importantly, thank you for honoring the call of the church and the Lord's call and serving faithfully all of these years. Thank you for that. We also, <clears throat> yeah, that's good. Oh, 
On behalf of the Pastor Search Committee, we have a presentation of this portrait of your family that you can hang in, in your home. And uh, I hope you will value it as a, on behalf of the Pastor Search Committee. So God bless you and thank you. We look forward to many more. All right, and we're not, and we're not, we're not done. Uh, you got Danny uh, Cravens, the chairman of the deacons, and Steve Cookingham, who's chairman of the personnel committee. I have a couple more things to talk about. Pastor, as chairman of the deacons, I am more than privileged on behalf of this whole church body to show you our appreciation for this 15 years. And I'm glad it turned out good since he divulged I did an investigation <laughs> on it. <but laughs> I thought those were supposed to be confidential, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, you, in a, for a personal note, you have been my pastor over these years. And for me and my family, you have been there for us when we needed you. And I appreciate that. And I think I go along with lots of other people here Amen. in this congregation. And... You has always been there for us as a church. In times that we've had some difficult times, you were our strength and our courage. And when we had some great times, you were right there leading us and rejoicing. That is a true good shepherd, and that's what I feel that you are. The deacon body, in representing the whole church congregation, wants to present you with this tribute print. For your office. I feel sure you'll find a great place for that in your office. And I think you may hear something a little bit later. But it's going to be set up here somewhere for the maybe next couple of weeks or so. So that everyone can see it out in the atrium to see this. But it's a beautiful work. In addition, the personnel committee, uh, represented by the chairman, Steve Cookingham, is presenting you with a financial gift. Also, <laughs> <laughs> with the financial gift, the personnel committee is uh, including an additional week of vacation for you and your family to go enjoy. As a big part, real big part, of the, the whole family, Mary Ann and Callie are being presented flowers. <laughs> and he's quickly given the money to Mary Ann, if y'all didn't notice that. <laughs> uh, Pastor, congratulations, and you've meant a lot to me. And now then, you know him being up here on the podium, he's got to preach. So I will now turn the phone over to you. Thank you, Danny. Thank you for your generosity as a church to Mary Ann, Callie, and myself. Thank you for the, the beautiful portrait and... Um, and for this wonderful memento piece that will go in my office. And there are a lot of memories represented in that frame of some things that God has done. And I'm just very grateful for that and for, for you. Um, the way that uh, a pastor knows that he's loved many times is in the way you, you treat a pastor's family. And uh, you have treated my family so very well. I tell people I'm a big boy and I can take a lot. But uh, pastor's family shouldn't have to endure that. And you've, you've always treated my wife and my daughter with such kindness and love. And I know I'm loved by the way you treat them. And so I thank you so much for that. In addition to that, uh, I just want to thank you for being a pleasant people. Uh, you're, a, you're a pleasant people to, to serve as pastor. Um, and that's not true in every church. The pastor uh, people relationships sometimes is strained and, and uh, you, you're supportive and, and when God speaks you say let's go um, and I'm so grateful for you and I'm grateful to be the pastor of this church and 
I've said on a few occasions, but I want to say it again, that Marianne and I, we, we love living in Wichita Falls. Um, we scarcely knew, we, we'd driven through Wichita Falls on the way to Colorado like everybody else, you know. I mean, that's what people do, right? And, uh, but, but we love living here. We love serving here. And we're thankful to raise our daughter in this community. Um, every Sunday that I have stepped to the pulpit, I have carried this particular Bible. And you would have no reason to know this, but the reason that I carry this Bible is because this is a Bible that was given to me by the members of the Pastor Search Committee. And they each wrote a note in the blank pages of this Bible. And there is seldom a week that goes by that I don't read at least one of those notes when I step out to preach and to stand in the pulpit. Um, I believe that what I've been entrusted with is a stewardship. It's not ownership. Um, it is a stewardship that God has granted me, but that the members of this search committee especially entrusted me with. And I want to honor that and respect that every single week. And so this Bible has become very, very dear to me in, in that respect. And I also want to thank... Um, the members of uh, the staff that I serve with. The members of our staff are hard-working people. Um, you see what they do on Sundays and Wednesdays. I see them throughout the course of a week. And what I would say to you is that they work diligently. They love Jesus. They seek Him. They want to reach people for Christ and to grow people in the knowledge of the Lord. And, and you have a great staff that works with you and leads our ministries, and I'm very grateful for them. And among them is uh, my closest relationship with Jerry. Um, I, I began to think about this, that when God sent Moses back into Egypt, he sent Aaron with him. And when God sent Paul on the first missionary journey, he sent Barnabas with him. And later there was Luke that came alongside him. And God's always sent someone alongside as an encourager and a support for his man. And Jerry's been that to me. And I, I want to say thank you, Jerry, for the relationship that we have and the friendship that we have. I felt a little bit like when we were leading up to these, these moments, I'm, I'm, like, I'm telling them, the staff, you've got to pull this, you've got to tone this down a little bit. This is feeling like a bit much. I mean, I'm feeling like it's a retirement celebration. And I, I'm like, I, I ain't done yet, you know. Um, and, and um, so what I, I want to do, just real quick, and I promise this will be brief, but I want to read you a verse of scripture that I read often in my personal devotional time. Jesus, in John chapter 17, prays a prayer. We call it his high priestly prayer in, um, in the New Testament. It's a prayer that he prayed on the night before he was betrayed and then ultimately put on trial and crucified the next day. But in John chapter 17, verse 4, Jesus is praying to his Father and he says, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished or having finished the work which you've given me to do. I pray that verse back to the Lord a lot. And I pray, first of all, that I will glorify him on earth. My earnest prayer, my desire is that much is made of Jesus in whatever I do, in whatever I say and preach, and whatever we do as a church family, that he and he alone is glorified. Fifty years ago when I'm long gone from here and from this earth, it doesn't matter if anybody remembers the name of Bob McCartney, but if they remember the name of Jesus, that will make all the difference in eternity. What matters is what is done for Jesus. What, is done, what matters is what magnifies Jesus. And I pray that someday when somebody stands up over a graveside somewhere, that they can say, of Bob McCartney's life, that you glorified Jesus with your time here on earth. But then I also pray the second part of that. And that is, and I finished what you sent me to do. Now Jesus did that perfectly. And I have to be honest and say that I certainly haven't done it perfectly. 
Uh, you could probably fill a book w with the stuff that I did that didn't work more than you could with the stuff that did. But I pray that I finish, and I finish well, the work that Jesus sent me to do. What I want to say to you is this. There's a lot more work left to be done. Our city is a city filled with churches, but it is also a city filled with lostness, with people who do not know Jesus, who don't have a personal relationship with him. They know about Jesus, but they don't know Jesus. Some of them have religion like a flu vaccine. They've been inoculated with a dead version of the real thing so they can't catch the real thing. And it's our responsibility to lead them to Jesus, to lead them to the cross and repentance and genuine faith in Him that they might experience the joy of genuine salvation. Our city is a city of lostness and it's our responsibility to, to reach out to them. And some of them are your neighbors and your co-workers and your friends and your classmates and people who need Jesus. But our city also has one of the, as its fastest growing demographic, a Hispanic population that is Spanish speaking that is largely lost. They are caught up in a lifeless religion, many of them, with no power and without knowing the power of of God unto salvation. And I have a heart, God has really burdened me that First Baptist Church must have a ministry that reaches out to the Spanish-speaking population of our city. They are people created in the image of God. They are souls for whom Christ died. And I don't want to see this just start some storefront ministry somewhere and send some money and put them off to the side somewhere right here on this campus to have a Spanish-speaking ministry that integrates them into the life of First Baptist Church would be an infusion of spiritual life and power in our church that I believe would be so incredibly positive. I believe God's calling us to greater mission and ministry by putting boots on the ground on every populated continent on planet Earth to go and support missionaries on short-term mission trips, to go and support our missionaries who are there all the time, to enhance our church planting ministries inside the United States. I believe that God is continuing to move. So what I want to say to you is this. Thank you for today. But there's work to be done. And I'm ready to go back and put my hand to the plow. I'm, I'm so excited for what God. I'm so excited for what I believe God has for us to do together. To make a kingdom impact that the gospel would be proclaimed above all else. And that the name of Jesus would be exalted. God bless you and thank you. Pastor, we're going we're gonna to close out. If you and your family would come up here, Jeff Roach, immediate past chair of the deacons, is going to pray us out, pray for you guys, and do so in volunteer oh, style. Love, love All right. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you today with hearts full of thanksgiving. In Jeremiah 3, you promised the people of Israel that you would give them shepherds after your own heart who would feed them with knowledge and understanding. Fifteen years ago, you sent us our shepherd, our pastor, our leader, and our dear friend, and we are incredibly grateful. Not only have you blessed us with a strong and courageous pastor who boldly, without reservation, speaks biblical truth as he leads our church family, but you have given us a man who has compassion for our community and an unflinching vision for your work in our city. We thank you also for Pastor Bob's family, who have also been a tremendous blessing to us. Mary Ann has served faithfully alongside her husband in so many areas of ministry, especially in our children's area, and has made a huge impact on our church family. Callie made her momentous arrival shortly after their move here to Wichita Falls, and we are 
equally grateful for blessing us with such a wonderful young lady who loves the Lord and is a young woman of grace and compassion. Just as Jerry spoke of your command in 1 Timothy 5 that elders who direct the affairs of the church and are worthy of double honor, especially those who work in preaching and teaching, Pastor Bob has led our church exceedingly well and he's very much deserving of our efforts this morning to honor him, his family, and his ministry. We ask you to continue to keep your hand upon Pastor Bob, Mary Ann, and Callie as he continues to be to proclaim the light and life of the gospel in an increasingly dark world. We ask for your protection and continued inspiration for Bob as he seeks to continue to lead our church family according to your scripture and your anointing by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for 15 years with the McCartney family, and may we all honor you and bring glory to you, even as we honor your faithful servant. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.